So tell me a, the story about, I think it's called Let's Be Friends. And um, I think your connection with Elvis Presley and well, Gracelands. No, well, Gracelands, Elvis, my word. Well, the story about Elvis is, is, I'll try and make this as brief as possible. It will probably take about an hour and a half. But I was assigned to Carlin Music with my two ex-songwriting partners, Jeff Moore and Chris Arnold. And we had an office in the Carlin Music building uh, at 17 Savile Road. And the guy that, who ran Carlin Music, who owned it and ran it, was a wonderful dear, 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 dear friend and publisher who sadly passed away about a year and a half ago. His name is Freddie Beanstock. And Freddie Beanstock is, is or was uh, an absolute giant in the industry. And we had an office in the lowest, lowest basement you can imagine. I wouldn't even call it lower ground floor. It was lower, lower ground floor in this building at Carlin Music. And Carlin Music stretched five or six floors. And uh, uh, Freddie said to us one day, we said to Freddie one day, you know, we'd love to have an office in the building. And the building was full of songwriters. And there was dear old Clive Westlake on the top floor. He wrote Dusty's Close My Eyes and Count to Ten. And... Guy Fletcher and Doug Fletcher. There are all these different writers in the building, but they were all ensconced in the building. And we said to Freddie, you know, we'd love to have an office. He said, well, look, guys. He said, you know, if you can find a space here, be my guest. He said, well, I just think it's full. So we, we roamed the building, went upstairs, downstairs, in the ladies' chamber. And down on the, on the basement floor, there was a men's loo and round the back of the men's loo, you went down this sort of corridor made of concrete, was this washroom about the size, well, probably about half the size of this studio. And in the corner was a little sink. So when guys used to go to the loo, they used to go, if they washed their hands, they used to go in the washroom, rinse their hands and go back upstairs. We looked at this washroom and thought, we could turn this into an office. So we showed this room to Fred he said, well, guys, if you really want to, be my guest. So we made that washroom into our office. And it was, I mean, as a side story, it was hysterical. Because we'd hear people coming down the steps to go to the loo, and we'd start playing songs. La, da, 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 da. So they hear the movie. That's brilliant. Anyway, there's a knock on our door one day, and Freddie comes to the door. Uh, and he knocked on the door, and we said, yeah, hello, come in. And, and, it, and Freddie came in, we thought, my God. What's Freddie doing here? He had this like palatial office on the third floor, which was like Buckingham Palace. We thought, what's he come doing here for? And we thought we immediately thought we were going to get the get the sack, get it chucked out, you know, get the boot. Oh. And he said, guys, he said, I wanted to come in and see you. He says, and uh, he says, uh, I'm going to Nashville in uh, on Monday of next week, and I think this was about Monday or Tuesday of this week. He said, and, have you guys got any songs for Elvis? Well. The pandemonium that set foot in the office. We were diving, snatching at tapes and cassettes, and this, and he, and he was just sitting there watching us. You know, we were just going absolutely crazy. He said, "Guys, guys, settle down." He said, "Look, if you've got something, I'm leaving on Monday. If you can get something to me before Monday, I'll be leaving Monday night." He said, "Just fetch it up to the office." So he left. We all passed out and swooned. And uh, we thought, well, we started listening to songs that we had and we just didn't feel that anything was right for him. So we decided to start writing there and then. And we started writing songs on the Tuesday. By the Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, we had three or four ideas that we thought were good for him. One of them was, uh, let's be friends. Uh, one of them, no, sorry, one of them was a song called This Is The Story. And another song was A Little Bit Of Green. And we went into a studio and we did this demo and I remember thinking, my God, this is the most having to do a demo that I'm going to sing that could possibly be heard by Elvis. It was like momentously overpowering, yeah. you know, and I thought, and I was trying to get the feel of, you know, how he would sing it as well. Anyway, we did these couple of songs, we gave them to Freddie, Freddie went to Nashville and we didn't hear anything for about a month. And then we got a phone call from Paul Rich. Paul Rich was the general manager and he was on the very top floor. And uh, he phoned down, he said, uh, you guys, uh, have you guys uh, 
got some. Can you spare me five minutes? I've got some news for you. So we thought, what news can he have? And we like rushed up to the top floor, and he said, uh, he said Elvis is going to be recording two of your songs. And we thought, oh my God. A month goes by, and he calls us again. Paul Rich rung down, and he said, um, he said, okay. He said, I've got. Some recordings here by some, I know, fairly well-known American singer. He only got the word singer, and we just slammed the phone down. And we ran up these five flights of stairs. Oh, my goodness. And we heard these recordings. And, well, it was just mind-boggling. One was the song called This Is The Story. And he had phrased it exactly, Brilliant. honestly, Graham, exactly as I had phrased it on that wow. day. Wow. And, um... He loved that song so much, this is a story, it's on quite a few albums. He performed it live in Las Vegas, in his act, which I've also got on the album. Anyway, you asked me about Let's Be Friends, so I'd better get to that. Then Freddie came down again about a month or two later and said he's doing a movie, and in the movie he sings a song to an autistic child. He said, and if you'd like to pitch a song for it, we'd love for you to do it. So we, we came up with the song Let's Be Friends where he sings to this autistic child. Chris wrote a beautiful lyric for that, by the way, Chris Arnold. And um, we did the demo again, went across to America. He recorded it. It didn't make the movie, sadly, but they had it as the title track for an RCA Camden album yeah. that they released called Let's Be Friends. So uh, in the end, we ended up with four songs recorded by him. and uh, Wonderful experience. And did you get to go there? Sadly, I didn't know. What happened was, again, this is another story, but we were in New York, Jeff, Jeff Morrow, Chris Arnold and I. Yeah. We were known in those days as Arnold, Martin and Morrow. And we were in New York, and we normally visited Freddie when we were in New York, and we were coming to the end of our trip there. We had about two or three days left. So we were staying at the Plaza Hotel, because we could afford it in those days. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I rang Freddie, to say that we were, we'd been in New York for a few days and we were going back. So I rang Freddie and said, look, I don't know if we're going to get time to see you. And he said, oh, that's a shame, guys. He said, you know, he said, uh, he said, uh, would you be free to come to Nashville with me? He said, I'm going to a Presley session. I'm flying over there tomorrow. I said, what? Hang on, uh, <laughs> let me call you back. So I went into, uh, I, I said, you're not going to believe this, but Freddie's just invited us to go to Nashville with him tomorrow and we were going back to London because we had a 50 or 60 piece orchestra session at, at, at uh, CTS Studios in Wembley, it was all booked and we had this huge session booked and that's why we were flying back. So we had a powwow between the three of us, in the end we decided that Chris was the most dispensable of the three of us. So Chris went with Freddie to the Elvis oh. session. Jeff and I flew back to London to do the thing. Oh, wow. Chris met him, went to the studio, saw him recording oh. and everything. Absolutely marvellous. He turns oh. up, six foot two, bronze, looking absolutely fantastic. And when he recorded, he used to record with a mic as if yep. he's on stage, you know. And uh, of course, uh, not yeah, long after yeah. that, he passed away yeah. and, and the chance was gone. So I put that down as the biggest mistake yeah. of my career. Yeah. But nevertheless, to have the relationship and the association, fantastic. So uh, that's my story. That's my older story. Thank you, David. Don't mention it. <laughs>